I'm Dan Mason. I've been at Rio for 30 years. I am Amanda Mason, and he dragged me along in high school, so yeah, almost 20 years ago. We've been married for 16 years, been together for 19. So we have four kids. Our oldest son, Dre, was adopted from foster care uh, before we had any others. And uh, before Dre, we actually had fostered three other kids, too, in two different placements, and one of them was a set of brothers. And then we also have twins, which... Funnily enough, we found out that we were adopting Dre and found out we were pregnant with twins all within about a six week period. So we went from zero to three. Like the middle of COVID too. Yeah, yeah middle of COVID. Locked up. Yep, yep. And then we also have a six month old. So I feel like God imprinted on our hearts from, or my heart from a long time ago that we should foster. Uh, I grew up right in downtown Fort Lauderdale and I grew up a lot around a lot of kids who were in the foster care system or in and out of it. So I kind of knew them, knew about them, knew about the programs. And, uh, you know, then I saw it throughout Rio because I grew up in Rio and, you know, we had a lot of families and people that we know now who went up through the foster care system and people that, you know, I just was like, what a difference that can make in someone's life if you actually open your home and open your heart to those people. So that's what, that's what really imprinted on my heart. Then it was a matter of convincing Amanda that we should do that. The biggest thing that changed my heart is that God very clearly tells us in the Bible that we are to take care of the orphans and the widows and foster children are our modern day orphans. So that's no better calling on, especially a mother's life than to take care of those who can't take care of themselves. Absolutely. So on a basic level, what it means to be a foster parent is you're opening your home to a kid who is completely removed from theirs. So it could be that their parents got in some trouble. A lot of times it has your parents get in trouble with drugs and the state comes in, they remove the child and they put them in the foster care system. And then there's a number of families who have their home open around the county and they get placed in one of those families. The best thing to know about being a foster parent is that it's going to hurt and it's not about you. That's ultimately what you have to go into it, is knowing that it is not about you, it is about these kids. Your feelings, your opinions have to go to the wayside because these kids just need love, they just need a home. And you can do it. You have to be licensed to be a foster care parent. So we started that in 2017 and we got licensed, actually Memorial Day weekend. We were planning on going on- 2018. 2018. We were going on a little trip and then we left on a Friday we decided to make that a, a, a quote unquote baby moon because we didn't have any other kids. So this was like, okay, if we get back, we might have a kid, who knows? So we made that a little baby moon. And then the Tuesday after we got back, we got placed with our first foster son. Yeah, we were actually on our way over to the West Coast of the state and we we're driving and you know, we're like, oh, you know, who knows what will happen next and if we'll get a foster care placement. And then we're in the middle of Alligate Alley and we get a call and it's like, hey, we've got a placement for you. <laughs> so I'll never forget that moment. It was, it was really cool. I think God taught us through saying yes to be foster parents that uh, you have no control of your own life. I, you uh, you have to submit wholeheartedly to Him, and then you have to expect you know a certain level of disappointment because, like we had talked about before, one of the hardest things to do is you get this child in your home, you welcome them, you follow all the steps, you love them, you care for them. They become a part of your family. Your friends know them. Your church family knows them, and then boom, they're gone and they're out of your life. So, you know, being ready for that, knowing you don't have control and knowing, look, you, you have to trust God that he's the one who's gonna be in control of this whole situation is certainly the, like a lesson that can be taught throughout any other aspect of your life too. Yeah, and something that I tell people all the time when they ask about, you know, why did you foster? And you know, it's so hard, I, I could never do it. The biggest thing that God taught me is that it's not about me. It's about these kids that don't have a home. They are literally ripped from everything that they have known and loved, no matter how toxic the situation, that's still their family. But they need a place to go to. They need someone to love on them in that period. It's just about these kids that just need, they need a home. They need somebody to love them. To give like an elevator pitch to someone and say, look, the reason you need to foster is because there's hundreds of kids in the county and if it's not you, and if it's not someone you know, and if it's not someone in your church, then they can go to the worst possible place. And there's no way you want that 
on that child because none of them deserve it. None of them deserve to be just... They have already been through so much. Mistreated. And yeah, you do not have to go far. So we're, we're right on US 1 and between Broward and Davie Boulevard and you have to go literally a mile in any direction to find some kid who is just in the worst situation of imaginable. That kid is desperate. How can I help them? Yeah, I'd say to anybody who's considering this and they're on the fence, they're on the goal line, if they're using the, the clock and they're at 1 a.m. or if they're right at midnight, you know, you, you have to pray about it because the Bible commands us to take care of the orphans and the widows. So opening your home up is one thing, considering how else you can help is another and saying, look, if there's a foster care family out there, they probably need help too. So maybe you don't open your home to those kids, but maybe you say, how can I support the rest of them? How can I get them a meal? How can I do some babysitting? How can I help cover? So no matter what, there's so much opportunity. So if you carefully pray and consider about how you can help, I think you'll find there's a million opportunities to help. Yeah, and if you really don't feel like you're necessarily at that point to foster yet, you can still always, you know, talk to anybody who has been a foster parent. And you can come talk to us. You can talk to anybody that you know that has ever fostered and you can have just that open, dialogue and conversation and that would be the point where you can legitimately pray about okay am i taking this next step to be a foster parent or do i really need to be more of a support role person